People think being a delivery person is easy, but it's more complex than anyone can imagine, although Harry always did his best. He didn't have a car, he used a scooter to deliver orders from a food ordering app, and usually it was great. Riding a few distances wasn't that hard, but things always got a little dicier when he had to cross the highway, mainly because it was snowing every once in a while this season. People always seemed to become more restless and scary on the big road, so Harry had to be extra careful because he was on a scooter. That day, he was trying to get off the highway as quickly as possible when he saw an older man trying to cross the road. He was frail and looked cold in his unkempt jacket. The honks of cars echoed as they passed him and the man flinched as they did. If that kept going, someone would run over the man and Harry wanted to prevent that mishap so he stopped his scooter in front of him. Sir, let me help you cross, he offered, grabbing the man's elbow to guide him. Harry put his other hand out and started leading the older man through it. The drivers were unhappy about stopping in the middle of the road, but they stopped because Harry kept his hand raised and gave the drivers a scary look. Luckily, they reached the other side after a few minutes and the old beggar smiled brightly at him. Thank you so much, young man. I can't believe I finally crossed. It always takes a long time. My house is this way, but I walk through town on the other side, the old man explained and Harry nodded. You're welcome, sir, but please try to find another way to get home. It's super dangerous to cross the highway. It's like drivers go a little crazy and this time of year is even worse. Be careful out there, Harry said and straightened his scooter to get back on it. Wait, young man, can you tell me your address so I can send the thank you gift? The older man said, reaching for Harry. Please, I couldn't live with myself if I didn't repay this kind gesture, he insisted, and Harry nodded, rattling off his address. He lived in a nice neighborhood because he had inherited the house from his parents who passed several years ago. His three children loved their new home, but they all missed their grandparents terribly. Sadly, tragedy struck their family shortly afterwards because the pandemic cost him his job and now food delivery was his entire livelihood. Some days he had to work 18 hours to keep his family afloat. He was his children's only parent because his wife had abandoned him long ago and Harry was determined to build a promising future for them, even if he didn't have a car to make those deliveries. He was saving for that. Still, he didn't expect anything from this poor older man. Thank you again, the senior beggar waved as Harry rolled away to continue working. However, he almost crashed his scooter the following day when he got home from working on his last order. A brand new car was in the open garage and his kids were jumping excitedly on the lawn. Normally, he didn't allow them outside, but his eldest Lucy was smiling too. Guys, what's going on? He said wide-eyed, throwing his scooter on the grass. Dad, it's a gift, Lucy said and pointed towards the man Harry hadn't noticed. Sir, what are you, what are you doing here? Is that your car? How? What? What? Why? Harry stumbled through questions as he approached the old beggar he had helped cross the road. He didn't understand what was happening. Why was he walking around risking his life if the man had a car? Most importantly, why was the car in his garage? My name's Reginald and this car I bought it many years ago for my grandson. My wife and I only had one son during our marriage and she left me when my company went bankrupt. She took my kid of course but I tried my best. Still it wasn't enough. My son got used to his stepfather's money and I couldn't compete. That's terrible, Lucy said holding her siblings close as Harry listened intently. Yes it is young lady. My son called every once in a while but we were never close. A few years ago my grandson was turning 18 and I'd met him a few times. I wanted to do something for him, so I got this car, Reginald pointed at it. He hated it. It's a vintage Cadillac, Harry pointed out, shocked. My grandson, much like his father, likes shiny and new. I didn't know that. He said that his real grandfather, his step-grandfather, had already gotten him a brand new SUV, Reginald swallowed. So I had to take this one home and I couldn't drive it much. It hurt. But I kept it in great shape and I think it's time someone had it. I could tell from your work uniform that you deliver food and thought you could really use the vehicle. I can't accept this extravagant gift from a stranger, sir. It wouldn't be right, Harry shook his head, although he was so grateful that someone thought about him at all. I want someone who deserves it to have it. A man who'd stop in the middle of the road to help an old beggar with nothing deserves something like this, the older man insisted. Sir, you could sell this car and live a better life, Harry said, lowering his voice and stepping close to Reginald so his kids wouldn't hear him. The old man shook his head. I don't care about money. I beg for it now because I need to eat, but I never accept much. I don't need much. My house is paid for because I bought it years ago and it's enough for me, though it has its problems now. I saved all I could when my body was able to get this car only for it to get rejected. The greediness in my son and grandson's eyes killed something in me, so I don't want to sell it. I want my effort to have real meaning. Please accept it. The earnestness in the man's face couldn't be denied. Harry swallowed thickly at the moisture gathering in Reginald's eyes and finally nodded. Thank you, he said quietly and hugged the old beggar. How about some dinner? Lucy offered, brightening the mood. Harry repeated the offer to the older man who tried to refuse, but they insisted. They had dinner and a wonderful time. Harry's kids missed their grandparents so much that they loved having another senior person around. The next day, Harry delivered everything in the Cadillac and got home early to spend more time with his kids and actually enjoy himself. 
He invited Reginald to come every Friday for a special dinner and became like a member of their family, a family who valued each other after anything money can buy. The older man died a few months later and Harry and his kids were the only ones at his funeral and the only people who would never forget him.